Hi, I'm Paul from VeloX and I love riding my bikes and my Brompton all year round. I'm going to give you now some tips on how to stay safe on your bike in winter and autumn and stuff to think about so you enjoy the experience of cycling in the winter more because it is brilliant. So why cycle in winter? Well, I've been a lifelong cyclist and so is my partner, Sarah, and I just don't want to give the bike up. I don't want it for me. I don't want it to be a seasonal thing. I'm not really into kind of turbo trainers or putting the bike on a turbo trainer, especially the Brompton. I think it would look uh, slightly silly on a turbo trainer. So for me, cycling in autumn and winter has always been a part of my cycling experience when I was younger, so my 20s to 30s, I've always mountain biked and I'd always be in the forests in the winter. And I loved in the autumn, especially how the mood of the forest would change and the smells would be different. And I guess that now, now I'm a bit older and I don't do as much mountain biking, that has moved over into my road and touring cycling adventures. And I would recommend it for, any, for anyone. I don't think that as humans, you know, we have to be indoors all the time. We can suffer a little bit. You know, the cycling I do, I'm not going to be in any danger as long as I look after myself. So why not? I've had some epic rides recently where my friend's beard iced up. And when we went to a cafe, it all melted. I had another one where we went over the Seven Bridge on an Audax and people were having to get off their bike. But it's little bits like that that you survive and you remember and kind of leave a lasting imprint on your memory. So I 100% recommend cycling in the winter, especially on the Brompton, to come join me and I'll teach you a little bit about what I do in winter to stay safe. So one tip is make sure your bike is in good condition. I'm lucky I'm a mechanic, but mine and Sarah's bikes never go out on a ride unless they are 100 percent you could call it me being a little bit anal but i do believe that we get a better experience riding the bike and there's also less issues for us so one thing that can happen not on bromptons but on bikes with disc brakes is people go out without checking their brake pads the brake pads go down to the metal the metal goes onto the discs and it causes you quite an expensive bill so it's always worth before the winter getting your bike serviced if it has heavy use through the winter you might want to tune up in the middle of that. So a full service would be like stripping the bike down, greasing all the components like the headset and making sure everything's lovely. So if water gets in, parts aren't going to be as affected by it. A tune up then is just gears and brakes. With Bromptons, if the gears and brakes are set up well, they do last a long time. This bike here doesn't really actually need much of a gear service. So you, if I was going to use this heavy in the winter, I may think about having a full service for the summer. So as well as keeping up with a service schedule of your bike, depending on how much you ride and what conditions you ride in, really important to keep your bike, any bike, especially a Brompton clean. We have a video about how to clean a Brompton. As a general rule, cleaning a bike after every ride might not be practical. Today, I'm probably not going to get as much muck on it uh, as needed for it to have a full wash. But I would, the general rule that I go for is when my bike starts to look a bit filthy, I give them a wash. It definitely prolongs the life of all the components and just looks after the bike itself. Specifically to the Brompton, they are steel frames. You don't want loads of water sat in the bike, but we cover all of this in our video, so give this a watch. So one of the biggest tips that I can give is keeping on top of your tires, making sure they're pumped up enough. Uh, I do see some people, especially riding Bromptons, going really low on their PSI, on their tires. I had a friend I went away with, he will remain nameless, and he had about 20 and I forced him to go to a garage to pump them up because basically for the main reason that it would cause him more effort, but also I couldn't take, we were cycle touring on Orkney, I couldn't take a few days looking at 20 PSI on a Brompton tire. So certainly I like to pump them up to about 100, 110. I've done that, I love that, suits me well. I know some other people like them a bit lower. Make sure the tread's good. As mentioned in other videos, we use Marathon Plush, Well, we Marathon Plus tires, and they're really good all round tires. Mud guards, I think, are super important and they stop splash on the bike, but also more importantly, you and other riders. Uh, so in winter, some of my bikes are fitted with mud guards, uh, like the Brompton permanently has mud guards on. Some, are, like my road bike, have clip on ones, but definitely look after your tyres and treat yourself to some mud guards if you don't have any. 
what's super important with winter cycling is lights. So generally as a rule of thumb on any of my bikes, I have a light to see at the front and light to be seen. So with the Brompton, uh, this Brompton in particular, I'm lucky enough I've got a dynamo hub. So I have light on the front that's quite low down, but it does show up the path in front of me. And then on the back, I have a standing light. So the back light stays on at traffic lights. There's enough power put through, so it just stays on. Now, the only thing is this system is really, really good, really comprehensive, but for me, it's just a little bit too low. People expect lights to be a bit further up. So I back it up with a to be seen light on the back. This one's from Kong, the Con Cobber, Cobber, very Bristolian. And then I've got a little one from Infini Lights on the front. USB chargeable. This one's super simple. It actually just plugs into the USB plug. Lasts for ages. I can do a whole day, especially with the back. So if I'm doing an Audax in the winter, it'll be on all day. And there's, yeah, loads of life left in them. The dynamos are great. Really uh, kind of a bit of an expense to go down the dynamo route. But if you've got a dynamo and lights, I never have to worry about not having lights on this bike. They always work. I've had the bike for like eight years and they always work. So it's great having a dynamo system on this bike. Aftermarket dynamo systems can be a little bit of an investment. Definitely worth it and we do loads for customers. The main benefit is you've always got lights. So I know that this bike, if these lights, the battery runs out, I know I have lights. The beam from the front light is really quite good and you can get different standards of lights that give you different beams. But you do, I would always recommend backing up battery powered lights with the Brompton. On my other bike, I have a, I don't have a dynamo on my road bike. So I have a very good uh, light from light and motion that lights up the road. The only thing is I know it only lasts a certain amount of time. So ideally I need to nick Sarah's if I'm going out on a bigger ride. So that kind of what they call like battery anxiety comes into play. So dynamo, dynamo system is really good, but you can get a good set of lights these days for reasonable money. But yeah, lights, lights, lights. Okay. Well, just this really. I mean, it's a winter, autumn day, having coffee outside, a bit of cake. You know, we've been on a bit of an adventure. We're not suffering. I love it. I just love the feeling of it. And for me, if I have a really good winter cycling, getting out on the bike regular, that feeds into my next summer. And I know a lot of people do turbo trainers for that, and that's their own thing. But for me, it's all about being outside and I love it. So when we're riding in the winter, we really want to think about the different surfaces that we ride on. So as a general rule, I tend not to go out in super icy conditions. That was more so when I lived in Scotland, I would really not venture out in the ice just because it could be good where you're, you're say you live, but actually down a country lane or there's a bit that's not been gritted and that's it, you can come straight off. If it is icy, that's a good time to go and go into the forest or go and do a little bit of mountain biking because generally the paths are quite good and it's quite good fun in the colder, icy and snowier weather. For the Brompton, we really want to think about the surfaces that we're going to hit and what speed we're going to hit on them. We're obviously dealing with a much smaller wheel. Now here, for example, I used to, we're in the centre of Bristol and I used to set up a mobile bike shop here. And every Wednesday when I came and set up on a rainy day, there would be at least three people that would just hit the deck, hit the deck, hit the deck. And at the time, there was a marble surface and people, if they stuck with the cycle path, it was really poorly made, they were fine. But if they came off of it, just hit the deck. And they just weren't prepared for that. They kind of shut off. Um, and it wasn't great to see, really. I mean, they almost needed a sign or someone to say, no, watch out. So we really want to think about that. Ideally, if we're on a cycle path now, the surface should be better but we want to be making sure we're not going too fast looking out for leaves any hazards and really adapting our riding style it's not just a case of one style fits every surface and learn about different surfaces but what we don't want to be doing is we don't want to be coming off on the bike especially in the cold and just adaptions with the rear wheels you've got weight over the rear wheels making sure they don't spin and making sure that the front's not going to hit a surface and suddenly twitch you out so Go slow, steady, because that always wins the race. Clothing, another really important one. So dressing for conditions in winter and autumn can be a little bit difficult because of the varying temperatures, especially in this country. So you can go out and get 
like really suited up and then you're really hot which kind of just doesn't help you cycle and can get you a bit more colder because you're building up sweat but basically this is the layering systems i use on my feet i have socks obviously waterproof socks from seal skins and then over shoes from shimano which i really like um, they're a bit difficult to get on and off but they're really good especially if it's cold and they're just that good layer of just keeping out any moisture on my top i wear a jersey and then um i think it's a vela works winter jersey from presca who unfortunately aren't around anymore i've been fortunate enough to get this top i found second hand from gore they don't make it anymore but it's got primal loft in so that's really good on a super cold ride or if i'm just going to be bimbling about that's a good one i always make sure i take a coat with me glove wise i've just been wearing thinner gloves today some kind of autumn winter gloves and these are like more full-on winter they're from pearl zoomy and they've got um, primal loft in them as well so they were a good purchase um, coat and i just have another warm layer here but basically the, the principle i do is i have enough to keep me warm on the bike and enough to keep me warm off the bike so as soon as i stop i've got my hat on um, i've got another layer on i love this buff Ooh, the microphone's just there i love this buff because it is a really good scarf if it's super cold i use a thicker scarf and then i can put this on my head and it keeps my ears warm and it fits nice and snugly over my hat so i guess whatever works for you again i'd like to say i haven't gone out and brought all this equipment overnight this is all stuff that i've kind of brought over years and years and years and i just treat it well and you know it, it lasts i don't know how long i've had this jacket five plus years maybe and it lasts uh, this gilet is well old so yeah but look at getting some nice warm clothes and you'll stay warm on the bike and one important thing that i always wear is a high vis i know it's a bit kind of marmite for people when i see cyclists wearing black with a light on the back in the middle of the day i'm just like why why not be seen you know i have almost been taken off my bike a few times and someone said oh i couldn't see you so and i didn't have a high vis on at the time so at least if i've got this on then i've got all bases covered and you'd be like well why didn't you see me because i have this and i do notice that drivers pedestrians they will clock you just that little bit sooner especially when i ride in the country and they'll see you through a hedge or around a corner they do clock you so yeah very inexpensive piece of kit and one i recommend so it's really good to take with you all times of year but especially in winter any tools or equipment you need to, to keep your bike going um, as much as you can the good thing about the brompton is if you're in an urban setting if there's a problem you can just fold it jump on some public transport get a taxi to where you're going but it's always good to have some spares so on my brompton as mentioned before i have really good tires to minimize punctures but i do carry everything i need to change an inner tube that's even on the back wheel um, i have done it before sometimes on a train lucky it happened before i got on the train so i did it on the train journey uh, and i carry spares just in case i need to do anything or a bit of glass rips a tire uh, so that's what i carry especially if i'm going into the country um, so it's worth learning what you need uh, what you think you can actually use there's no point in taking a bunch of tools that you don't know how to use and again making sure that the bike is serviced tires pumped and that should minimize any issues so i hope you've enjoyed the video with some little bits of insight into how i ride in the winter and autumn on the brompton and how you can look after yourself again i can't stress enough how much i love cycling this time of year even in horrible weather i just love being out on the bike and with cycling and any outdoor pursuits it's a journey so we've got we've shared some tips with you but actually it's about if you want to go and do it go and do it yourself don't overthink it too much but make sure you stay safe and see if you can take some of these little tips and just adapt them into your cycling but it's about going and finding your own path with these things and that's what's so nice about cycling you know you make it your own so thanks for watching and please subscribe if you have any comments about anything or share any tips that we haven't touched on please do so and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching